Well, for all those people who thought I'd never keep blogging throughout the year, this one's for you. Welcome to another pint with JG. This afternoon, I'm in Tallboys Beer Market, which is in the Thorntons Arcade in Leeds. Never been here before. It's absolutely lovely here, and I recommend it highly. This afternoon, I am drinking a can of Common Grounds Triple Coffee Porter. I don't know anything about it. Um, it's actually made at Willow Park Business Centre, Willow Lane, Huddersfield, and it's actually really, really interesting. Very dark, uh, tasty beer. I recommend it very highly. Um, a few people have said, apparently, I don't drink enough beer during the videos. Well, I'm gonna make sure I have a jolly good glug now, and then we'll begin. So a few weeks ago, I went out and bought a combat helmet. Um, everybody in the office laughed. They said, what's that combat helmet for? And I said, because it's referendum day and we might need one tomorrow. The real question now is whether actually we do. The question that seems to be on absolutely everybody's lips at the moment is what actually is the market like? Well, actually, post Brexit, and I was one of the prophets of doom, the market is pretty bloody good. Um, we've been inundated with jobs, we're busy, the quality of the jobs is very high, and right now, I'm extremely, but very cautiously optimistic. So, we've got a lot of jobs, we're very, very busy, we've got plenty of candidates to work with. What's bothering me this month? Well, a lot of people are still walking through the door and whilst post-Brexit we seem to be okay thus far, and I am saying thus far, I think we'll know where we're gonna be in September, Whilst we seem to be okay, there still seems to be a mindset that we're in some kind of crazy boom. A lot of people walk through the door, they're telling me at the moment that they want to work for a pre-IPO company. They want some skin in the game, they want some stock. And what I want to talk about today is just how crazy that actually is. So I read a, a very interesting article in one of the papers the other day uh, about a company we all know very, very well called Dropbox. Um, we're a user, we're a corporate user at Inward Revenue. Um, the article was talking about how a lot of IPOs aren't really happening at the moment. Uh, actually, last year there were 169 NASDAQ IPOs. They raised, according to my notes here, $30 billion in 2015. Um, so that was a 39% drop in volume. It was also the lowest figure since 2009, um, which actually was right in the darkest depths of the recession. So irrespective of how good we think the market is, People are walking through our door telling us that we've got to find them jobs as stock options, but there's never been fewer jobs out there that are offering those kind of opportunities. Now, we have a name for these sort of people, and personally I like to call them home run hitters, or uh, the people who are trying to smash the ball out of the park. Um, these are the, you know, they're the equivalent of a cricketer who hasn't scored many runs, coming up to the crease and hoping he can just knock one for six, even though actually he hasn't hit one for six all afternoon. So the people I'm talking about, and not content with getting a job, being good at it, winning some deals, hitting some targets, and earning their money year in, year out, building up a portfolio, doing some investments, and retiring at a sensible age, having worked hard throughout their careers. The people I'm talking about are the ones who want to Pasco, collect 200 quid, get their pre-IPO stock options and retire and run off into the sunset. And I like to categorise these people in a number of different ways and I'm going to explain it to you now. The first of my categories is what we call the loser. Now the loser hasn't hit a target or earned any commission for absolutely ages. Probably about two and a half to three years. He usually gets found out about 26 months into a job when he's just coming up to his, the end of his first full year of target, when his current employer suss out exactly what he's like, he gets a little bit of a nudge from his current employers and he becomes very, very susceptible to a call from a headhunter. Somewhere in the CV of our loser is some unbelievable glory. There'll probably be a couple of P60s that are somewhere along the lines of 350 to 400,000 pounds, having worked for a major corporation where he landed a massive account that was just about to spend, spend, spend. Since he had those massive P60s probably about six or seven years ago, he's never stopped spending like he was earning at that level ever since. Um, he's in debt, he's behind, and he needs to make a huge killing 
just to break even and get back on even keel. So he chases these big pre-IPO opportunities. Now my next category is the complete opposite. Next category is what I call the Narcissus. Now the Narcissus is actually a very, very good sales guy. He's had an extremely good run of it. He's hit a lot of targets, he's earned a lot of money, and he's been consistently really successful. So Narcissus has had a very good run of it. He's worked for some really good companies. He's sold some really good technologies. He's worked in a really good market. He's got some amazing P60s. He's got a stable track record, and he knows it. He knows he looks great. He knows his CV looks great. He knows his background looks great. And as a result, he's gonna cash in. He's gonna to go to the highest bidder and he wants to absolutely get everything he can get out of the market because he can not, in his mind, ever fail. So the next one is the, what I call the green-eyed monster. Now your green-eyed monster has got a mate who's got a mate whose brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, best mate, worked at Microsoft as a toilet cleaner back in the 70s and made five and a half billion dollars out of stock options. And he's jealous, he's bitter, he's fed up, and he wants his piece of the pie. My next favorite category is what I call the FOMO. Now the FOMO, he's a little bit like the green-eyed monster. He's got a mate who works for a company on the periphery of Shoreditch where they have a bring your llama to work day every Friday. They're probably building an app that enables gym users to share used towels at some point and each employee has 2,000 billion stock options and he's extremely nervous that he's not going to get any himself. Now my next favourite category and the one that's most likely to be able to take the risk and the one that should be taking the risk is a category we call the empty nester. And the empty nester's kids have left home, he's paid for his mortgage, he's not worrying about school fees anymore, and actually, having had a really strong, solid career, he's in a position where he actually can take a risk with a really small startup company offering some stock. What we typically find with the empty nesters is that they usually come to us having worked very, very hard to try and get their kids through school, through university, and they're at a point in their career where they just say, do you know what? I want to go out and take a really exciting, crazy job, and I'm going to do it purely, simply, and wholly for me. And sometimes, these are the guys that really do make the killing at the back end of their careers. Category five is one that we call the Trustafarian. This is the guy that's got family money knocking around somewhere. Possibly a elderly aunt on a deathbed somewhere, but he's got plenty of cash behind him. And he doesn't really care whether he wins or loses. As a result of that, he has this devil may care attitude about the way in which he sells, which actually in a weird way, probably makes him quite a good sales guy. So the loser should not be looking for pre-IPO, stock option focused companies. With the track record that he's got, in the market that he's operating, the reality is, any company that is offering pre-IPO stock options, any company that is a really sexy VC-backed business, can simply get better than the loser. They can get a better guy. They can get the Trustafarian. They could possibly get themselves a FOMO. They could possibly get themselves a green-eyed monster. They could possibly even get themselves an empty nester if they're really smart about how they play it. But they can get better than a loser. They just simply can. They've got more leverage than he can give. If he does go out and get himself some pre-IPO stock options, then actually he's probably gone and got those pre-IPO stock options with a company that simply can't get one of the other categories to take the job. And as a result, he's put himself in a very, very risky situation. He's probably in a thousands to one case scenario of actually hitting that home run, passing go and collecting 200 pounds. That the company are going to be expecting a miracle from the loser because he's so desperate to make up his shortfall in commissions that he's going to have screwed them when he negotiated his salary at interview. And as a result, he's going to be under enormous pressure when he first joins the company. The one I worry about the most is Narcissus. He's about to drown in his own reflection. He's got great P60s, he's got great earnings under his belt, 
And what's going to happen here is, is it really easy to hire now. He's got these gilded P60s and everybody's going to want to bring him into their business. As a result, he's going to try, fail, try, fail, try, fail again and end up becoming the loser. The green-eyed monster should be careful what he wishes for because he might just actually go out and get it when actually he was doing all right where he was and he's going to end up in a job where he's got his big sexy pre-IPO stock options but actually he'll fail, fail again and end up becoming the loser. Now if our empty nester could honestly, and I mean honestly retire tomorrow, then he should have a go. If he can't, then he should think twice because his biggest challenge is he's going to wake up the next morning having taken his sexy pre-IPO stock option job actually being an elderly candidate with a bad track record. For exactly the same reason, the trustafarian should check the size of his trust fund for exactly the same reason. The FOMO, he should relax a little bit. He should read the papers and realise what's going on. He should look at the market and think, hold on a minute, what am I doing here? Relax. You're doing all right where you are, Mr. FOMO. You've not got a bad job. You're not doing too badly. Stay calm. I would say in over 5,000 candidates that I've met in my years in recruitment, I reckon I've met about 50, maybe 60, that have genuinely made a killing on stock options, going to work for small startup companies that eventually IPO'd. I've met an awful lot more people who've had their fingers incredibly badly burned. Um, most of those career moves that I've seen over that time where people have the green-eyed monster or the FOMO, they just end up damaging their track records and earning less money. The, the implications are huge of a, of a bad year or a bad six months. Because by the time you get up and running again, you've lost a whole year of your career. And I think for me, the conclusion of today is, there's a reason we get into selling and it's two things. One, it's fun and two, it's because actually we get paid commission on what we sell. If I sell, you pay me bonus. If I don't sell, you don't. And actually, what I can't quite work out is, when did it become so bloody unfashionable to earn commission? And when did it become so uncool to take a job and be good at it? I just can't get my head around that. And for me, the guys that really make the killings and the ones who I look at, who are at the back end of their careers, who I think, wow, that guy's really done it. They're usually the ones who year in, year out, year in, year out, have ground out big numbers for good solid companies who've paid them handsomely for being talented and hardworking. So that's me for another month here at Tallboy's Beer Market drinking Common Grounds Triple Coffee Porter, which uh, might just be the second tin. Uh, look out this week and this month for Book Club where we're talking about the challenge a customer which uh, might get given a pretty hard time when we debate it with our studio guests on Thursday. Thanks for watching, great to see you, have a great summer.